FMD and illness. So we, we kind of talked about that, and you have a number of uh, clinical trials kind of ongoing at the moment. Well, we have clinical trials and many different things, you know, so the, um, they range from, yeah, diabetes, uh, several cancers, uh, so autoimmunities, uh, Alzheimer, um, the prevent, cancer prevention. Um, yeah, so those are just the, the ones that I'm, I'm thinking of right now. But uh, out in, the, in the autoimmunities, I, inflammatory bowel disease, um, also multiple sclerosis. Um, yeah, so those are just some of the, the, the ones that come to my mind. So how closely are uh, you, you and your team involved in these trials? I mean, they're being run by other organizations, I believe, but are you working with them in kind of most cases? I help them, of course, uh, design it. You know, at the beginning, the clinicians that approach uh, uh, the FMD, they may have very limited knowledge uh, of the mouse data, they may have read a few papers, uh, and and of course they cannot have knowledge of all the other clinical trials that are running uh, and, and not published, right? So this is why they usually come to me. I spend some time um, helping them and 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 discussing um, what may be the, the best way to use it, and then they, they of course they do the trial on their own. Uh, I usually have very little to do with uh, with their trial, but. Uh, um, but sometimes they come back, uh, or in most cases, they come back to me at the, at the end, uh, you know, with the paper. Uh, so, in, and, and of course, you know, I, I, I sometimes help them with, uh, um, with I just give them my uh, opinion on the paper. Excellent. And would you normally use FMD with some other um, intervention? In, when you're looking at these diseases? I mean, is there any that, that are just FMD? Yeah, so it depends, right? So for cancer, clearly, I always say, I always say, we've never cured the mouse with with only the fasting mimicking diet. Um, and uh, so the almost every paper we've ever done, it's FMD plus chemo, FMD plus radiation, FMD plus hormone therapy, um, et cetera, et cetera, plus kinase inhibitors. Yeah. So yeah, so I think for cancer, clearly. Um, the FMD is very good, right? It's, a, it's as good as chemo, which is really remarkable, right? If we could demonstrate that clinically, that would be a revolution, right? So if we could demonstrate clinically that a cycle of FMD is as good as a cycle of chemotherapy, uh, that would be remarkable. It's going to take some time to, to test it and we'll see the results. But, um, but we don't see cancer-free survival. We only see it when we combine the FMD with, uh, with the, the therapy. So for example, we published last year um, the combination of fulvestrand, estrogen receptor blocker, um, palbociclib, a CDK4-6 inhibitor, and the FMD in mouse. So this is a hormone therapy for breast cancer in the mouse. And uh, the, the two drugs, uh, like for patients, they delay the cancer progression. Eventually, the cancer becomes uh, resistant, and it takes uh, and it progresses. Um, and uh, with the FMD, the cancer regresses or goes goes down and down and down until you start seeing mice that are cancer-free, right? So it's really powerful. And we just published a new paper where we, we do the same for triple negative breast cancer by combining kinase inhibitors uh, with the FMD and really remarkable. Again, we could drive a cancer instead of up, we drive it down. Um, and um, and the, the more remarkable part is that the, what we show long-term inability of the cancer to... Uh, to become resistant. Um, so this cancer, but uh, I think when you get to diabetes, metabolic syndrome, pre-diabetes, uh, that's a different story. I, I think that if caught early, uh, we clearly show, uh, let's say hypertension in those that may have 135, 138. Uh, uh, yeah, so there, I think there's a lot of potential. We, we're not at the point where we, we can say we know for sure but I think we will be within a year or two, you know, uh, where we'll say uh, this can be treated, can used as treatment of, of diabetes. Of course, the FDA is going to have in the United States that's going to have to make that determination, and uh, in regulatory agencies are going to have to make the determination in Europe. Uh, but we're very optimistic now, uh, based on lots of uh, clinical data, that um, that this can work uh, um, instead of uh, of drugs. Interesting, because I hadn't thought about that before. So, because it, the fast mimicking diet is not a drug, and so I have, like, 
So the FDA looks at drugs and says, okay, this is effective or not based on clinical trials. So would the, would the FMD follow a similar path? So they say like this process is approved for cancer or diabetes? Yes, yes. So, so, so now um, um, the, uh, the process has been started you know, to, for f- first for cancer. And so the fasting making diet has to, is now being turned into an actual drug. It's a food-based drug. It's, it was called a botanical drug, but it's a drug, right? So, and, and, and the compromise now as we're going to approach the FDA is going to be <laughs> what, how much of the food are they going to allow? So we're going to, uh, we're going to um, basically try to protect the patient and say um, the patient needs to, to uh, uh, have a, um, a uh, food, a variety of foods, uh, but, the, but the FDA is probably going to push towards simplification and more and more um, as, as few ingredients as possible uh, that can achieve the, the fasting mimicking effects. Right. So do you have any idea of when that would be available? No, because uh, this is the FDA process. It's a very slow uh, process. Now, it is possible, and that's something that uh, um, that, that is a legal uh, question, um, that um, the fasting mucin diet can be considered as part of programs as a food uh, because it is supporting the standard of care. So as long as there is a standard of care um, the, um, uh, and the food is just supporting the standard of care, it's not trying to replace the standard of care, um, then, uh, yeah, that already is allowed, right? So, so you know, uh, any oncologist in the world, and, and particularly oncology clinics where they have uh, a dietitian, they recommend food, right? So they could recommend, you know, the the standard diet, or they can recommend some of these drinks and, you know, and shakes and things. So that's already available, right? So then um, it will be up. It already is up uh, to the uh, the oncologist and the dietitian at a hospital or center to decide what the nutrition should be. Now, it, obviously, when you get into a fasting mimicking uh, diet situation, uh, there is a lot more concern. And so, that's for the for the company and 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 for for the clinics to to figure out and for the lawyers to figure out you know, but it's also of course uh, something about the patient right. So we always sometimes forget that at the end uh, and uh, the, the, the patients are the ones that are uh, waiting, uh, particularly those that don't have anything that is working right. Those are the ones that are waiting for things that could change uh, could change a lot in their in their as we've shown in the clinical trial in in Holland. Um, there was a, um, in, in the chemotherapy, there was a, a five-fold difference in the, uh, in the non-response, in the portion that did not respond to the chemo, uh, in the, uh, those that did, uh, um, all cycles of the fasting making diet versus those that did none of the cycle, right? Five-fold. And it's pretty remarkable. And also remarkable to see a dose response, right? So a dose response. So the more cycles of the FMD the patients did the um the le- less likely they were to not be non-responders to the chemo um and uh yeah so this uh, was both for the uh, clinical response looking at the imaging uh but also for the pathological response looking at um how many um what was the percent active cancer cells within the tumor have you looked at the mechanism for, for why the fmd is helping reduce the cancer Did you? yeah for 20 years now so uh yeah so we we yeah, we have a pretty good idea of lots of different things um and lots of papers on this and uh, but but the main i think if you had to summarize it the main result would be the revolution of the cancer environment right so not just the nutrition the sugars the amino acids the proteins but also the factors insulin igf1 uh, IGFBP1, et cetera, et cetera. So leptin is another one. Uh, so it's just uh, making it, if you think about a cancer, it has evolved uh, for the great, great majority of people, it has evolved having excess of almost everything, right? Excess carbohydrates, 
excess amino acids, lots of growth factors. Um, so it is evolved in an in a abundance uh, condition. Right? So um, as this is taken away from them, um, and, and why do I use the word evolve? Because there are actual mutations, right? The mutation accumulate and epigenetic changes accumulate within the cancer cell. And so the cancer cell, uh, if, you, if it has lots of sugar, uh, it does not contemplate, it does not reserve necessarily the ability to go into a starvation mode, right? So most cancer cells cannot, right? So whereas the normal cells, of course, they, they know how to do that very well. Uh, so now you have a differential problem, right? So the, the normal cells, not only they don't see that as a problem, they use that fasting period to do a reset uh, and to, to improve. Um, but the cancer cells instead are confused and, and they're looking for sugar. They're looking for amino acids. They're looking, and not everything changes in the law. So the, some amino acids actually can increase during fasting, but it's just a revolution. Now you have lots of ketone bodies, low sugar, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so, so that's, um, that's what makes it difficult for the cancer, but it doesn't necessarily it does not kill all the cancer cells. And that's where you have to come in with the, with the chemo, uh, with the radiation, with uh, lots of drugs. Um, and, and not just generic drugs. They should be the drugs that are very specific for that cancer. They work very well on cancer. Uh, so, you know, if we have, for example, we've shown vitamin C works very well with KRAS mutated uh, uh, cancers, uh, colorectal cancer. So if we take but high dose vitamin C, and then we combine it with the fasting making diet. We have we get a very powerful anti-cancer effect uh, in the mice, and, and so now you know we're very interested, for example, in uh, in clinical trials uh, pursuing that. 